Well, cloud computing conference season is upon us. Should you go to those conferences? Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider Show, where you talk about the truth of cloud computing and how to make it work for your enterprise. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, b Geek. Let's get started. So I get a lot of questions about which cloud conferences to go to. Uh, and, uh, and even uh, as COVID ended, should they go back to cloud conferences? Obviously, they were virtual uh, during the pandemic. And it, it's an interesting question because... Uh, uh, my honest answer for myself is I don't go to a lot of cloud conferences unless I'm asked to speak. Um, obviously, many of them are very uh, focused on a particular cloud provider. So in other words, it used to be you could go to a cloud conference and it was focused in the, it was run by a media company and they focused on uh, all cloud and all providers. Now, that's not the case. They're run by uh, individual providers and these are huge shows. Uh, getting hundreds of thousands of people who show up to them. So the question is, is it beneficial for you to show up to these events or should you monitor them remotely or should you pay attention to them as, at all? And I, I think it's a legitimate question. So let's talk about it. So as I mentioned, the bigger cloud conferences are going to be owned and run by vendors. And we have a number of them out there. Um, Google Next, excuse me, Google Cloud Next, and a conference normally held in Vegas. Most of these are going to be held in Vegas. And they provide keynotes, product announcements, everything that's related to the Google Cloud. And everybody who is working on or working around the Google Cloud platform, press and analysts will go to that event. Uh, I've been to one uh, that was actually held uh, in San Francisco a few years back, and I thought it was great. I thought Google did a good job. Uh, I haven't been to one since then. Microsoft Ignite, which I've never been to. Uh, there are prominent conference for Microsoft Azure users and developers where attendees can engage with executives, engineers, industry leaders. So that's Microsoft's big uh, cloud computing conference focused on their cloud Azure. And then the big one, it's like Woodstock for cloud computing, is going to be the reInvent show, which is actually going to be held in December. Most of these are going to be held in the spring. Uh, but reInvent is an absolutely huge show. Hundreds of thousands of people are there. Always held in Vegas. It's always held uh, the week or the second week after Thanksgiving. And uh, it's like the place to go to. They have keynotes, breakout sessions, hands-on workshops. And you go to the keynote session, it's something to behold. I mean, the CEO of AWS would be speaking to uh, you know tens and tens of thousands of people you know, out in the audience. And there's other ones there as well, such as IBM has one, Oracle has one, HP has one, Dell has one, Broadcom, VMware have one, and there's a few independent events uh, that you can talk about. But again, the momentum is shift. Instead of having large media companies run these events like it was in the 90s uh, and the 2000s when I you know, spoke at a lot of conferences, now these are run by vendors. And so they're obviously about particular vendor interest. They're focused on a particular... Uh, cloud, uh, and then partners of that cloud provider. So all the content, all the discussions that occur normally during the weeks that they have these cloud conferences, or the three or four days that they have these cloud conferences, are going to be focused on a single specific technology with some exceptions. Obviously, they do some things that uh, that are going to be adjusted to where, where uh, the technology is going. Now, what's happened in the last uh, couple of years, obviously, since uh, AI hijacked everything, these things have turned into generative AI shows. Um, and actually, AWS did a pretty good job in not making it as much about AI. But obviously, AI was systemic to all of these conferences uh, for the last few years. So it'll be interesting to see what they focus on this year at AWS reInvent and also focus on uh, next year in the spring. When we have the Google Next conference and the uh, Microsoft Ignite conference. So there's a couple of options now during the pandemic, these conferences all went remote, and now they're back in person, and they're kind of going stronger than ever. People are still attending them, attending them in droves. You would think that the attendance wouldn't as return as quickly, and for the most part, it has. So, But you still have to ask yourself, should you go in person? Should you attend remotely, which is possible with most of these, or, or just not bother with any of it? And, and that's an option as well. You know, sometimes if you're a vendor agnostic uh, architect like myself, um, there's a reason to take a deep dive 
into particular cloud technologies, but you have to remember it's about understanding a little of a lot of stuff, and you're not going to take too much of a deep dive in any particular vendor uh, unless it's you know on the critical path for you somehow. You're working for a, you're an architect for an organization that is uh, you know bought into AWS, Microsoft, or Google, and they're focused on the specific technologies that are out there. So you need to understand what the cloud computing conferences are. Look at the purpose of the conference and look at what's being offered. You know, typically they have features such as uh, keynotes, workshops, network opportunities, all these sorts of things are going to be there. And read the agenda as to what's going to be covered. Who's going to be speaking? Are they just uh, having employees of the company speaking? Microsoft, Google, AWS, or any of the ones I just mentioned earlier, IBM, Oracle, Dell? Or is this going to be a bit more of an open exchange where they're going to let anybody speak? They normally have employees and outside uh, consultants and experts who speak at these things. Or who are they? What are they going to cover? Uh, is it just going to be focused on the particular cloud provider? Are they going to talk about new and neat trends? Are they just going to focus on particular products, product announcements, things like that? And that's a real concern. Sometimes you go to these things, they're just advertising events, technical advertising events for the particular cloud provider. And you may not get a lot out of it instead of understanding about what that particular product does. And if you're looking to have a more holistic understanding of security, governance, uh, operations, things like that, you may not get them at these conferences because they're not there to provide you with the rudimentary understanding of some of the basic ways in which you're going to configure these technologies. They're there to tell you about their specific technology. So keep that in mind. So what are the pros of attending major computer conferences? Well, and this is big with AWS reInvent, there's networking opportunities. I know a lot of people who go to reInvent and the other conferences as well, who just go because they're meeting their clients, their customers, their friends, their colleagues. It becomes a big social opportunity for them. Some people don't even go to the sessions or even uh, the keynote presentations. It's there for the parties, there for the meetings. Uh, you know, there to press the flesh and get deeper in their particular industry. Some people use them as an opportunity to find jobs. I know a lot of people who will go out on the conference floor where the vendors are displaying their wares and go from boot to boot to boot with their resume uh, or, you know, LinkedIn, uh, their LinkedIn profile uh, and uh, hand it off to uh, uh, people who may be hiring. So they use as an opportunity to find other jobs. In fact, I had a, a client of mine a few years ago, I said he doesn't want to send people to reInvent because everybody who did that, uh, they came back and a few months later they had other jobs because they were networking to find uh, new employment there, which is fine, but that's an opportunity as well. You're building professional connections and partnerships, and it's an opportunity to have face-to-face interaction with peers and experts. So if that's important to you, those events are going to be very helpful. Someone like me, probably not as much. Uh, I do go to some social events and will attend some meetings, but uh, you definitely am not a smoozer. Uh, and so, you know, something like that, unless I have prearranged meetings that are set up, I'm normally not going to go off and, uh, and find the interactions, but a lot of people are, a lot of people love that stuff. And that's awesome. Of course, the knowledge skills enhancements, they're there to teach you stuff. And I think that's going to be important as well. So if you're going to learn something out about a particular product, for example, if I was doing an architecture that was focused on the AWS stack, which was definitely going to be the target for the architecture, reInvent would definitely be something I would go to, to get the current uh, trends and technologies as to where everything's going, what's working, what's not, that kind of stuff. It's very important. Also, exclusive insights into keynote speakers and panel discussions. You can typically watch those remotely, by the way. Just a hint. Um, and they're easier to watch remotely than there are to stand behind, uh, you know, 10,000 people in a huge hall in Vegas. Uh but you can get the gist of it, and you can participate in things like hands-on workshops and training. Sometimes they have boot camps they run at these events, either before the event, during the event, or after the event, and it may make sense for you to go there. Career advancement. Again, we talked about it earlier. I'm not going to repeat it too much here, but exposed to potential career opportunities, gaining visibility into the cloud community, opportunities to showcase your own, your own personal um, accomplishments and networking out there to meet some people to to get either new clients or new jobs and then inspiration and motivation which a lot of people go to these events people tell me when they come back from reinvent or they come back from ignite or they come back from google next 
they're very pumped about using the technology. They, they're full of uh, a, all the existing new knowledge. They're willing to take it back to their team. And they're just pumped to you know, take their uh, profession to the next level. So they're exposed to projects, breakthroughs, and industry opportunities to gain fresh perspectives and ideas, get new ideas from other people, and motivation to implement new strategies or technologies uh, in your own work. So a lot of people use these events as kind of a way uh, to inspire them uh, into taking things to the next level, either their career, their projects, their teams. And I think that's perfectly fine if they, they get motivated by that kind of stuff. So what about the cons? Well, first, there's cost involved. Um, if your employer is not paying for it, uh, you're going to be out the airfare, the hotel fee, and normally they um, it's not ch as cheap as you would think in going to Vegas. Uh, and the cost of all the travel stuff and the tips and the expensive and the meals and all that kind of stuff comes uh, it out to be a pretty penny if you're going to go to these events. Also, you're taking yourself off of the field uh, for a week or so to go to these events. So you're not working your project. You're not working. You're, you're taking time away from your normal duties to go to these events. And some people find that perfectly fine. And um, I give lots of people who are ten, who were on my teams the time off to go do this if they want to go do it and certainly even pay for it. But there, there's a cost to be had uh, by somebody, either your employer, or yourself, or the time away from your career. Potentially high accumulation of meal costs. Assess, you know, you got to assess the return on investment from attending these things. So you have to go, okay, go to this thing. I'm going to spend five thousand dollars on the event, and that's normally going to be getting off cheap, the hotel, the airfare, uh, to and from wherever you need to go. What kind of value is going to come back to me personally, or come back to my company in terms of me spending the time away? Time commitment, time away for work, daily responsibilities. Uh, you know, I have to balance conference conferences with professional obligations. And uh, that's one of the reasons I didn't go to many conferences. I would just have too much going on. And also, everybody in the company, everybody on my team was airlifting themselves to the conference. So someone had to stay back and, uh, and support the clients. So I, I found it uh, a bit inconvenient, even though I saw the reason why they wanted to go to conferences. Overwhelming information, the challenge in processing a large amount of information. And the big thing for me, you can't attend all the events. Uh, they have breakout sessions where it could be you know, 20 different sessions you want to go to at the same time. You can only go to one. Obviously, you can watch them remotely, and normally they'll give you access to the recordings uh, afterwards so you can go out and see the ones you missed. But again, if you're going to do that, why don't you just attend remotely unless the social stuff is going to be important to you. And there's networking challenges, difficult standing out in large crowds, you know, waiting to get into lunch, waiting to get into dinner, waiting to get into the concert event that they normally have. And you're, you may find it's going to be very difficult to find new connections, something uh, especially like reInvent, which is overwhelming. There's so many people there. It's very difficult to find the people you're looking to talk to or even make new friends because everybody feels like they're being pushed with the ocean of crowd and the ocean of people that are carrying you from uh, part, part of the event to the part, other part of the event. So bottom line at Forest Day, what are the factors to consider when deciding whether you should go to the event or not in person, whether you should attend remotely, or whether you should just not go at all? You have to assess your own personal and organization goals for attendance. In other words, what value is going to come back to the, your employer, to yourself, to your team, in you going to the event? If you're going to bring back some good ideas, and those ideas are going to have an impact on your efficiency, then you know by all means, go to the event. Analyze the theme and agenda for the conference. Consider the uh, you know what they're going to be talking about, and you know for example, a lot of people were not happy the fact that the cloud conferences were focused too much on on generative AI because they weren't going to do it yet, so they didn't have the money to do it. So they were just talking about you know keeping up with their cloud ops stuff and their storage stuff, and the generative AI stuff was so far off in the distance. But a lot of these cloud conferences, certainly the big ones that are run by vendors, that's all they wanted to talk about. And that can be a bit frustrating if you're focused on more the bread, or, bread and butter needs and requirements that the enterprise needs from the cloud. And consider, you know, reputation and value of the conferences that are out there. Which ones have a good reputation to go to? Um, since so many people go to these things, you can find out on Reddit or LinkedIn or, you know, figure out whether it's something that you're going to find valuable or not. And just kind of keep that in mind. So if you do go to a conference, what are some of the tips to make the most out of it? 
um, plan your schedule strategically. Do so beforehand. They normally will give you an app on your phone, and you can pick the events and pick the speakers that you want to see, and it'll automatically remind you to go to the event, uh, to go to the session, and where it is, and how far of a walk it is. Um, so they do a really good job in that. So make sure you use those tools. Engage in active uh, in sessions and networking events as much as possible. Um, you know, it's always a, a fun challenge when you go to these things where you, you're never going to pay for a meal because you're going to a breakfast sponsored by one vendor, a lunch sponsored by another vendor, and a cocktail hour sponsored by another vendor, and a dinner sponsored by another vendor. So everybody is going to each other's events. You'll notice like it, like during reInvent or all the big cloud conferences, the there's probably 100 restaurants in a hotel, and all of them are booked uh, because they have private events that time because they're trying to smooth with their clients and find employees and things like that. And it's, it pays for them to take those efforts. So what are the conclusions of this? Again, I think the big thing to look at is that all the major cloud conferences that we're talking about here are going to be vendor focused where that wasn't the case uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago. It was focused on lots of different vendors and use cases and, there was more generalist speaking. They weren't working for a particular vendor. That, that's kind of gone away. So most of what you're going to hear is opinions around the vendors themselves. And, of course, they're into their own stuff. So if you go to the Microsoft event, they're going to be selling you Microsoft. If you go into the Google event, they're going to be selling you Google. If you go into the AWS event, they're going to be selling you AWS. There's lots of other vendors there not saying that that's not the case. And partner organizations will sell you different aspects of it. But you're really only getting their particular view that they're providing you and they control those events very well. So they're getting their message out in the way that they want it presented. So it's a marketing event more so than it is a learning event in many instances. So keep that in mind. So weigh your personal and professional priorities and circumstances. Uh, I don't go to a lot of these events just because the time away from doing this, you know, doing YouTube videos and my blogs and uh, podcasts and LinkedIn learning stuff and and you know teach my generative AI class. It's going to be more inconvenient for me to do it because I already have a pretty full week, and it's tough for me to get away from it. But sometimes it may make sense for me to go to a particular event. Certainly, um, going to a corporate event or going mass to speak. You know, that it's going to make sense for me to go to that event. And I've probably attended in my career. Um, 300, 400 different uh, computing events uh, in the last 30 years I've been doing this. So I've been to a lot of them and I've seen the whole thing change and refocus and get big. So the final thoughts is make an informed decision based on the individual goals and resources that you have. Um, I would consider you to think very carefully about allocating the time and the money to go to the event in person uh, if you're committing to that, just because the amount of commitment into doing that and also the fact if you're good, taking an architectural path which is kind of what many of you guys are doing here based on the comments that you're going to need an agnostic view of all the different cloud technologies so if you're only attending the microsoft event or you're only attending the google event or the aws event you're only getting the information and the knowledge from that particular silo of technology you're not going to the oracle event you're not going to the hp event you're not going to the Broadcom, VMware event, and it's, it's important to consider those technologies as well. Even some of the on-premises conferences that are out there, they're just focused on hardware systems. Architecture and creating these solutions is you understanding uh, a lot, you understanding a little about a lot of stuff and how the stuff is configured, how to make it the most optimized configuration. And that's almost never going to be a single provider that provides you with everything that's going to give you the most optimized solution. It's going to be a mix and match of solutions and technologies for different cloud providers, including the ones that are holding the big honk conferences that are out there. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my InfoWorld blog. Uh, check out my courses out on Go Cloud Careers. Having a great time teaching the generative AI course out there, generative AI architecture course. Lots of new LinkedIn courses are dropping pretty soon. You know, check me out there. Check me out on LinkedIn. Check me out on Twitter, or sorry, X. And uh, until next time, you guys stay very safe. I'll talk to you soon.